Hey guys, welcome to video number three. So, starting off as always, we're going to first off uh, close out yesterday's program, which was example two. I'm going to open up number three, and I'm going to right click and hit run ex3, just so I have the interpreter on it. And you can see it already ran through everything. But I'm going to come up here, top, byte equals eight. So um, in my color coding, you'll see this is just grayed out because I'm creating a variable assignment. So uh, to the variable byte, I'm giving it the input of 8. Uh, to bit, sorry, bit and then byte, tired. Uh, byte, I'm giving it the integer of bit divided by 8. That's because there are 8 bits in a byte. So that's, that's what that math is for. My old PC has a 32, and my new PC equals old PC times 2. Why? because it's a 64-bit machine. So just trying to use math. So here you can see I can, when I'm doing this math, it's not doing, it's not gonna put old PC twice. It's taking the input, and you'll see this as we step through the code, and it's using that input to do the math. Um, and we'll get to the rest as we step through the code. So let's put our breaker up top, and, and we'll hit our code, I'm sorry, run, run the debug, that's gonna run, rocket and roll, hit console. And let's start stepping through. So F8. So bit equals eight. So as I can see, bit is it shows bit and the heck gives it the input of eight. For a byte, it's an integer. I want the integer as the output. Take the bit divided by eight. So eight divided by one is one. So so far we're good. Old PC is 32. So as you would suspect, old PC now has an assignment of 32 in the computer. New PC equals 32 times two or 64. So if I put if I put old PC here in quotes and I tried to run it, it would have given me an error. It would have been a problem because it, it sees a string and you can't, it would, then it would have given me old PC, old PC, it would have done it two times instead of giving me the numerical output that I wanted for 64. So we haven't gotten anything down in the console yet because everything's been assignments for the computer. So now we're gonna get down into the console. We printed out the smallest unit of storage in a computer is a byte bit. Uh, it takes eight bits to make one byte. And we have the output, but look how we got there. It takes, comma. Now, I did triple quotes here only to show you it doesn't matter if it's triple, single, or double as long as they're consistent from the beginning and the end. And there's a cool trick we can do with the triple quotes uh, down the road. Comma. Now, I have bit. What it's doing is, and it even tells me here, bit equals integer 8. It's going up into the computer. It's looking, what did you give the assignment to bit as? 8, so it's going to print 8. It's not going to print bit. Bits to make. And that's a string, single quotes, could have been triple, could have been double, doesn't matter, comma, byte. It's going into the computer to see what is the output for byte, and it is one. And sure enough, there we go, byte, new line. I had to put that in if I wanted to see the word byte below, just like I had to put the word bits in above. Next line, the old way was 32-bit machines. This was the width of the CPU register. That's what the difference between 32 and 64 bits is. Um, and it is, it's exponential, so the amount of data that they can hold uh, is, is hugely different. But again, go through this code, see how you can break it, see how you can make it different. Understand that we got that number 32 by putting an old PC, so it referenced back to the variable old PC, and the output was 32. And that could, that could change as time goes on if it wanted to. It's, it's, it's a global variable. The 32-bit machines were limited to 4 gigs of memory. So the old PC, so 32-bit machines were limited to bit divided by 2. So that's going to be, um, I was going to say, how did that, I was thinking 32 again, Jesus. So bit divided by 2, so it's 8 divided by 2. I was just doing some quick math to get to 4 gigs, because that is true. 32 were resigned. Uh, I mean, uh, they hit a limit of 4 gigs. Next line, step through the code. That machine had a memory ceiling of, and we did a little bit of math of how many bytes it was able to hit on the 32-bit. So there was a limit into the bytes, and, and each each piece of data we put into a machine is uh, a byte of data. We'll get that's computer science, which I mean, we'll have videos on computer science as time goes on as well, because certain things are extraordinarily important, especially if you're gonna be self-taught when you wanna go to jobs down the road in terms of um, algorithms, binary trees, so on and so forth, it's, it's very important that you understand those concepts, let alone be able to explain them. So th that will cover those as well as we go on. Um, next line that we stepped through was knowing that turns into four gigabytes. 
And we did that as a, it did an integer. I did 2 to the power of 32 divided by a little number over here. And that did the math, and it returned that number as an integer. I was telling you I want an integer, not a float. So it gave me a whole number, and then we just have the word gigabytes. Next line, I'm going to scroll down here. Right now, I'm working on a 64-bit machine. How did I get that number 64? I just put in new PC, because new PC has that variable of old PC times 2. Nothing crazy there. Letting me rock out, integer, letting me rock out big number of gigs of memory ceiling. Um, I'm not going to hit that memory ceiling. I only have 128 gigs of memory uh, RAM in my in my current PC, which um, I'll just side note really quick say. Uh, some people say that's overkill, but when you get into deep learning and artificial intelligence and some of your data sets are 45, 50, 60 gigs big, uh, especially for facial recognition um, uh, and and and. One of the particular ways that we do the market is we use Python to create a game, and then we use artificial intelligent bots to learn the game, get better at the game, and then we apply it to real life situations. That takes that could be 40, 50, 60 gigs in there, and when you do something like a linear regression, logical regression, certain algorithms, it copies that data set while it's doing its math, so you need at least 120 gigs right there of RAM to properly um, run it in real time like I do. So I, I needed that. I, 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 at the low end, so my, my next machine is going to be a Xenon so I can get to freaking terabytes of, of, of RAM. Uh, do, do, do. So next line, yes, over 18 billion gigs. Um, yeah, quite a lot. I probably couldn't even afford that if I wanted to, 18 billion gigs. What the hell would you do with that? I'm sure someone's going to write in the comments, how much porn could you watch with 18 billion gigs? Um, can your PC case even hold that? No, no, not a chance in hell. Next line, I have 16 gigs, how do we get 16? I did old PC divided by two, old PC, dupe 32, divided by two, so it's gonna give me that. I'll put old PC in quotes because it's not, it's a variable, it's not a string. Uh, then I have gig RAM sticks and rocking, and then I have bit, so it's gonna pop into that number which I have there, bam, eight of them, and bit doesn't have to be a number, it could have been, it could have been a string of its own. Point is it's a variable. For whopping, and then I have 128 gig RAM in my PC. That is correct. And I did that math. I did old PC divided by two times byte, bit, ah, gig RAM my PC. But to max out what? But to max out what 64 can handle? How do I get 64? Just put in new PC. I would need 16 gig RAM sticks. Yeah, that's that's a lot. And again, how do we get that number? I want it as an integer. I did not want to float. And I'm telling it to round. That's going to get rid of those decimal points. So here's the math. Jeez Louise. So 2 to the power of 64 divided by a little number. And then that is divided by bit plus bit, which is 8 and 8. So it's going to be 16 divided by 16 because I have 16 gigram sticks in my system. Um, so that's how I was doing the math. So the round function just gets rid of the decimal output from this. And it just gives the whole number. We'll, we'll be seeing the round function again when we do things like um, import, especially when we do uh, math and so forth. Uh, all I did here was print a new line just to break it up, and you'll see that down below. We printed a new line here. Nothing's there. Um, and then I, I already ran through the last line. Yeah, I don't have a case for 1.1 billion 16 gig RAM sticks. Um, that. I don't know what the hell I put that in there for. It's ridiculous. I don't have a case for 1.1 billion 16 gig RAM sticks. So let's just... And I will save that accordingly because that didn't even make sense. Um, let me run it through again so it looks prettier. Good. Right. Anyway... Um, so again, for these new lines, you can see we have printed out new lines. We did some more mathematical operations in here. Play it differently. Um, do different math. It's important to understand uh, putting different math pieces in, into your code because at the end of the day, everything you're seeing here is higher level code and the computer doesn't see the word print, doesn't see the word machine, doesn't see old PC, new PC, underscores. It sees zeros and ones and that's why we're cup of code zero one it's still we're still a binary system we're still a, it's a log of two system and so these letters when i hit the u on my keyboard there's seven lanes that are giving a sequence of zero and ones that the computer knows oh you want to see the letter u it doesn't know what a u is just you want to see the letter u because of that sequence of those seven ones and zeros that came through when you hit that on the input so everything we're doing here, even the math, the numbers, the, 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 the functions, the syntax, it's just our way of communicating. It's a new language. That's how we're learning how to read and write to begin with. It's just a way of communicating to the system, this is what I want you to do with the data I'm putting in. This is how I want to see it. This is what I want you to do with it. So the algorithms are a way of saying, 
I want you to do that to this data. And the degree says, okay, well, here's your output based on that. But it's still all coming down to zeros and ones. We're, we're still stuck at transistors and, and, and so forth. And even, um, I mean, even if you're going to build CPU, if you're going to build your own computer and so forth, like you don't have to get nuts with CPUs because Python's still running on a single core. When you get to high performance computing, sure, you can utilize more cores on hyper threading. Um, and hopefully, have a really good GPU, which we'll get into another time. Um, but right now, if what we're doing here, what we're going to be doing for the next couple of weeks, you don't even have to get that crazy with it. Um, just have fun. Just print these things out. And again, you can run these files just like I showed you last week through the console. We're going to start getting into some games. So if you have kids or family members, they can play games with this. And it's kind of nostalgic because it looks very much like the DOS games um, from late 80s, early 90s. I think, I think it was late 80s, yeah. Maybe even mid 80s. I don't remember now. But anyway, play with it. Have fun. Uh, questions, comments below. Um, I will be answering them and looking through them. Uh, grab the code either from the description below if I can fit it. Otherwise, head over to Cup of Code 01, grab the code, and rock it out, and make sure you subscribe. Take it easy.